This is code.org and we're reversing 2D arrays. Guys, obviously we have a bunch of options here. I'm going to open them up just to show you. The concepts are the same. Pick a topic you're interested in. You're reversing the content. You're reversing one row of an array. You're reversing one row of a food truck array. You're reversing, oh, this one has the theater thing as well, but you're reversing the name of games. You get the point. So pick whichever one you think sounds good. I'm going to just stick with lunch lines, I guess. All right. Teacher has students in grades one through five, okay, organized in a 2D array. The teacher uses a 2D array to line up students for the cafeteria lunch line. Each row represents grades zero, one, two, three, four, and five, respectively. Okay, so this must be grade one, grade two, I'm not going to be able to draw this, three, four, and five. All right, that makes sense. Each row represents a grade. And if I wanted to make it a bit more clear, I'll often do this just for readability. It is a 2D array, right? So here are the rows of the array. And then here's the outer brackets of our big old 2D array. All right, you don't need to do this. I just think it makes it more clear. All right, write the reverse line methods to reverse each row of our 2D array. Okay, so that should be here. Now, when reversing the content within a 2D array, you need to keep in mind you don't want to use a for loop unless you're going to do something really fancy. And that is because if you use a for loop and you start at index zero, you go, okay, well, I need to switch Amelia and Beatrice. So plop. Then you move on to Aslan and you're like, okay, I need to switch Aslan and Alexis. So plop. Then I'm not going to be able to say that right. Then you go on to this one. Well, wait a minute, this is already switched. This should now be Aslan. And so if you flip flop them again, you're back to where you started. If you go all the way through your array when you're trying to reverse it, you unreverse it. So that's why we wanna use a wall loop to make sure we only go halfway through. Now I'm gonna start by only reversing one row of the array. We will get into the complexity of multiple rows in a second, but let's just start with one. I'm going to start with int start equals zero. So this is the start index is what I'm getting at. Or I could do starting column if I wanted. Uh, starting row index. Uh, I'm just going to say starting start. I'm just going to say start. And start's going to be equal to zero. Now the end, int end, is going to be equal to the length of the array. What's my array here? Well, if I scroll up, I know it's a 2D array of students. So I'm going to do students. Now keep in mind, if I just do students dot length, what that will give to me is the length of this entire 2D array. The length of the entire array is one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now it just so happens that it looks like each of these have five names as well. Regardless, we don't want the length of the array. We want to know the length of each row because we're reversing a row which is why I'm going to want to put zero. And since a length is always going to be one more than the last index, right? The length of this is five, but there's only zero, one, two, three, four is the max index. So I need, whoops, students, zero, row zero is where I'll get the length. And then I'm going to subtract one to make sure I can use it as an index. And now for my while loop, while let's do start so as long as my starting value is less than my ending value what do i want to do i want to move through my array now i don't want to kill off any students i don't want to get rid of amelia when i'm trying to flip through the array so i can't just say you know student uh row zero i said i was going to start with uh start is going to be equal to student uh, row zero end boom and the reason I can't do this is goodbye to our friend Amelia Amelia would now be equal to whatever values at the end of the first row which is Beatrice but then I can't change Beatrice Amelia has gone right if I do start zero end equals students this isn't going to do a thing because now the starting point is already set to Beatrice. I have lost our friend Amelia. Let's not lose Amelia. It's not kind. So what I'll do instead is I'm going to save it before I save over it. String. I like calling it temp. It's pretty standard in programming to do that. And what I want to save is the student's name that I am about to write over. 
which is the starting. I'm going to write over the starting student. So I'll go ahead and save the starting student's name here. Then I write over that student and I then need to change the ending student. But instead of doing it this way, I can do it the correct way and I can use my temp. Last thing I need to do, and I always forget this, is we have to iterate. Start needs to go up by one. So start plus plus or start equals start plus one is what I'm doing there. And then end needs to go decrement down by one. So I'm going to start counting down and up. And that's because once they meet in the middle, once these two are equal, we should stop looping because we don't need to switch things anymore. Now, again, this is just row one, and I'm not even sure I've done this right, but thankfully we get to debug. So let me go ahead and ask it to run. And let's see. Boom. So it looks like the second time through, it did reverse the first row, except the first row isn't good enough. We want to reverse all of them. So let me head back over here. And this is where it gets tricky. We need to loop through every row of our array. This is going to now be a loop inside of a loop. So what I'll do here is use a for loop because this one, I do want to go through every row, right? I don't want to stop midway through. I need to hit every point. So I'm going to use a for loop for this and do half for loop for this for int. Uh, I could call this row if that helps equals zero row needs to be less than. And now I'm going to do students dot length. And you might think, Mr. Kaiser, why just students.length here? That's because I want the length of the entire 2D array. The length of the students.length will give me five. One, two, three, four, five. It's going to count the rows. Now I'll do students. So it needs to be less than that. And then I'm going to go row plus plus. And now I'm going to do bam. Let me move all my content. Uh, might be easier to see what I'm doing if I do it like this, actually. And I'm going to just highlight this and hit tab. OK, so now that should be through the rows, but I need to make sure I use this value instead of using zero. I want to iterate through every row and. Cool, that's looking good. And just so I can uh, tell print students. Let's do a. I'll say print ln reverse lines. This isn't required, but I want to be able to tell. Bam, reverse lines, flip, 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 and flip. Cool. That is pretty tricky, especially with the two loops. You do just want to keep in mind, though, you do not want to use a for loop inside. You need to use a while loop so you don't unflip your flips. All right, onward.